Today I am testing out Portugal's fastest train, the Alfa Pendula. The country's flagship high-speed train does get a lot of praise online and many people applaud its design, comfort levels and low ticket prices. And whilst it's certainly not a bad product, my experience was a bit disappointing. There were quite a few issues along the journey, which is why I don't recommend the Alpha Pendula as a fast way to get from A to B in Portugal. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. The adventure commences at Lisbon Oriente train station. Good afternoon guys and welcome back to the channel. We are at Lisboa Oriente train station and now we are gonna ride Portugal's fastest train all the way up to Porto. So let's go! Lisboa Oriente is the busiest train station in Portugal. Completed in 1998, it was designed by renowned Spanish architect Santiago Calatrava, who is known all over the world for his bold, modernist style. In this context, some of Calatrava's other works include the World Trade Center Transportation Hub in New York City, the City of Arts and Sciences in Valencia, and the Museum of Tomorrow in Rio de Janeiro. The station is located in eastern Lisbon, more specifically the Parque das Nassoes or Park of Nations neighborhood. It's here where the 98 Lisbon World Expo took place. Oriente is well connected to Lisbon's metro system and you'll also find the city's main bus terminal here. Better still, the station is connected to Vasco da Gama Mall, a massive shopping complex with countless restaurants and retail spaces. The station itself is airy and modern, but a bit complicated. It took me quite a while to figure out where my train would leave, as it didn't appear on any departure boards. I ended up taking a wild guess and chose the platform that seemed most logical. As I am trying to navigate this maze of a train station, let's explain today's route. My train is the Alfa Pendula 137, traveling between Santa Apollonia, another main train station in Lisbon, and the northern city of Braga. Along the way, it stops in Coimbra, Aveiro, Villanova da Gaia and Porto, which will be my final destination today. From Lisbon Oriente, the train should depart at 6.09pm and arrive in Porto at 8.58, taking 2 hours and 49 minutes. Let's see if that works out. Overall, this isn't a bad train station, but they really have to up their game when it comes to the screens and also the announcements. There's one announcement going on right now, but I can't hear anything. It is not loud enough. By some miracle, I was actually at the right platform. The screens still weren't working though, and it became obvious that the train would not be on time. It ended up pulling into the station at 6.19 p.m., 10 minutes after the scheduled departure time. Not a good sign for the rest of the journey. As we are boarding, let's talk about this very unique machine. The Alpha Pendula is a 6-car electric multiple unit that was designed by a joint venture of Fiat and Siemens. It closely resembles the Italian Pendolino ATR 480 and its top speed is 220 km an hour. One of the Alpha Pendula's most fascinating specs is its tilting technology. The train can manage a tilt angle of 8 degrees, which allows it to go around corners at higher speeds than usual. The Alpha Pendula is still assembled in Portugal at a factory that now belongs to French rolling stock manufacturer Alstom. In service since 1999, all Alpha Pendula trains were modernized and refurbished in 2017. So, let's have a look at the interior. I am in second class today, which they call Classe Turista. The seats are very spacious and comfortable, and they offer plugs, coat hooks and great legroom. I am particularly fond of these tray tables, which easily fit a 16-inch laptop. The train also has window blinds that come down at the touch of a button, quite useful in sunny Portugal. The recline is also very satisfactory. Overall, this is a fantastic second-class product and among the best in Europe. It reminds me of the Spanish Renfe train that I took earlier this year on my Crossing Europe challenge. Be sure to check out that video as well. As good as this product may be, it cannot make up for the train's lack of punctuality. We remained stationary for a good 20 minutes, before finally departing at 6.38pm, half an hour behind schedule. 
we trundled out of Lisbon and passed the stunning Vasco da Gama bridge. Spanning 12.3 kilometers over the Tagus River, it is the longest bridge in Europe, unless you count the Crimean bridge, which was blown up a few months ago. I apologize in advance for the blurry shots, these are the result of very dirty windows on the Alpha Pendula. Anyways, during the first hour of the journey, I realized something. This train does not get anywhere near its top speed. The fastest we traveled between Lisbon and Aveiro was 120 km an hour. This might be due to the fact that the Alpha Pendula does not run on its own tracks. Comboios de Portugal is currently building a bespoke high-speed line between Lisbon and Porto that will greatly reduce travel times. But for now, this train doesn't go very fast. We kept racking up more delay and were now about one hour behind schedule. Not great. On the plus side, the loo was spotlessly clean and the general state of the cabin was flawless. I also connected to the train's onboard Wi-Fi, which was slower than a Windows 98. In other words, completely useless. As the sun was setting, I went to check out the restaurant car. The menu didn't have much on offer, so I went for a tuna sandwich and a beer. The sandwich was tasty and the beer was just what I needed. After passing Aveiro, the last stop before the Porto metropolitan area, we finally picked up some speed. At some point, we were one and a half hours behind schedule, but they managed to get it down to just under an hour. Alright guys, we are almost in Porto, we just passed Villanova da Gaia, and we have a delay of about one hour, which really isn't great for a three hour journey. And yeah, overall this is very underwhelming. I mean, the product is fine, the seats are good, but one hour delay on a three hour journey that is not acceptable, especially when you consider the price, because this is really not that cheap. So yeah, I wouldn't really recommend traveling on the Alpha Pendula. After quite a long journey, we arrived in Porto Campania at 9.51 pm, 53 minutes late. I wasn't able to find any official punctuality statistics, so I don't know if this happens often, but a delay of 50 plus minutes completely defeats the point of this train. I will explain why in a second. I also wanted to mention that Comboios de Portugal only gives you compensation if your train has a delay of more than one hour. As such, it's certainly not a coincidence that they put their foot down on the last stretch. Anyways, as we are disembarking, it's time to reveal the price. I paid 31 euros 90, which might not sound like much, but it's actually pretty bad value for money. You can get a bus for as little as 6.99 on this exact same route. That journey will take 3 hours and 15 minutes, which is a difference of less than half an hour, supposing that both vehicles are on time. And that is my biggest problem with the Alpha Pendula. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Don't get me wrong, this is a beautiful machine with a top-notch product and great technology. But it's simply too slow to work as a high-speed train. In most countries, high-speed trains are a lot faster than buses and cars and sometimes even faster than planes. In short, you pay a premium for speed. Due to the delays on my particular journey, the bus would have been faster and much cheaper. The Alpha Pendula might make more sense if you travel the entire length of the network between Faro and Braga, but on the Lisbon to Porto route it is completely pointless, which is unfortunate. Now I would love to know, have you taken the Alpha Pendula before and if so, what is your opinion? Please share your stories in the comments down below. As always, thanks very much for watching and see you again next time. Goodbye.